Hello and welcome back to Patrick Replies, the show where I, Patrick Willems, uh, reply to the questions and comments about the latest video. Uh, and today we are talking about the vetoes 2024 about the films of 2023. And look, I'm going to be honest with you. I think this is going to be the shortest Patrick Replies we've ever done. There's like, I think, one question from Discord this time. And so... I'm going to knock this out in, you know what, I'm not going to predict the time right now because uh, I will inevitably be very wrong. But um, I think this is this is going to be this is going to be a fun one. It's not going to be like last year where there were like, you know, hundreds of comments uh, yelling at me for not saying that Everything Everywhere All at Once was the best movie of the year. I don't think anyone got too mad this time. Anyway, I will say for the vetoes next year, because this is now just established as an annual thing, this is our, you know, award show every year, I'm really going to try to do it earlier. You know, this this one came out like five days before the Oscars. It like came out in March, and I would lo love to do it, you know, at least by mid-February, maybe even January. January would be great. So I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll try. No promises. I'm usually behind schedule on everything, so we'll see. But anyway, let's get into it. We are going to look at the comments pulled from the YouTube comment section by our community manager, the great Emma Logsdon, who's also editing this video. And so let's see what Emma selected. Inevitably, with any kind of like best of video, or in this case, like an award show with all these categories, we're going to have a ton of questions, probably the majority of them, uh, saying, why didn't you include this? Or I can't believe you left out this. And so this video is going to be me uh, defending my choices and maybe apologizing a bit. Wait one sec. I feel like we should, uh, we should put put these guys here, you know? It's it, it's it's the awards. Also, is it So here's the thing about the vetoes. Now I'm I'm just rambling now to the camera. The way we we do it in the show is I basically just give out a veto, a golden veto to like every winner. But then when we do like the top 25 or top 20 movies, that's the only time that the bronze swack hammer and the silver axel foley come out. And I'm like, how it I like these guys, too. I think Bronze Swackhammer is genuinely just a funny thing to say. Uh, but, like, where where else does it make sense to give out silver and bronze awards? I don't know. I don't know. Tell me how to make the show better. Anyway, let's jump in. The Zach SF. And, oh, oh yep, th this is kind of how I figured we'd start. I'm appalled. No revolted. No bedazzled no insulted that the best puke award didn't even nominate Messi from Anatomy of a Fall. For those who haven't seen the movie, that is the dog. He does throw up. Let alone award it the veto as it righteously deserved. That's absolutely and categorically preposterous and have put in question the whole voting committee of this award show and their ethics. Shame, I say, shame. Damn. Uh, uh, brutal. Here's what my defense is. Uh... I I forgot that the dog threw up in Anatomy of a Fall because I had seen it like s several months earlier and didn't have time to rewatch it. I feel like that's going to be my excuse for a lot of things. Uh, I just <laughs> forgot <laughs> about something in a movie. But yeah, uh, he did puke, and that puke is actually like relevant to the plot. Uh, yeah, uh, this is a shameful oversight on my part, and I'm falling on my sword here in this video. If I had a sword handy, I would I would literally fall on it. But I'm I'm truly sorry. I'm I'm going to to make a conscious effort to improve and avoid missteps like this again and I really hope that you can stick with me and maybe give me another chance. Moving on. Juhu says, "Oh boy." <sighs> This is going to be rough. I'm a Finnish viewer, Patrick, and I would have loved to have heard your attempt. Anyway, that nomination warmed my heart. Uh, so this is referring to the name of the song nominated for Best Musical Performance from the Finnish movie Fallen Leaves. Uh, Emma, very helpfully, uh, 
put here the title of the song again so I can give it a shot. Okay, so you ready? Me, who knows nothing about Finnish. And also keep in mind, um, I did not look up, as I could have, uh, how to pronounce anything in Finnish. So I have absolutely no concept of like what the language sounds like, how, what letters sound like in Finnish. I, I know I've, I saw Fallen Leaves, but, y you know, I can't like quote anything from it. Okay. Apologies to the people of Finland. I am just a, a stupid, stupid, ignorant American, uh, and I know nothing about your language, but I'm, I'm ready to learn and improve. Okay. Sintinit surun ya petu peti mixin. Please, please tell me, like, please someone write out phonetically in the comments how to say that. Ugh, that did not feel good to say. I... <laughs> This is this whole video is just gonna be like an apology tour. Gonzo says, I'll eat after watching this, I thought, but after Patrick constantly mentioned eating, I paused, made some food, sat down, and hit play for the next award to be Best Puke. I got played twice in one video. Well done, Pat. I realize that I could also apologize for this. Maybe I should, but I'm not going to. Thank you for that. Uh, look, you brought that on yourself. I'm not taking responsibility for it. The Great, Legal Eagle, says, First, I was not invited to the holiday special. Then I was not invited to the veto awards. I'm calling your mom. Uh, okay, so this is, this is rough to hear. Um, I will say, uh, honestly, on my part, big oversight, uh, not inviting Legal Eagle to the holiday special. Uh, he, he would have been a great guest. Yeah, I, uh, I have no excuse for that. I don't know what I was thinking. I think, look, I, uh, I just had jet lag fever and uh, I just had blinders on and I was like, you know, give me, give me, give me the hot new guys. Uh, and, and then, you know, yeah, I messed up there. Then I was not invited to the Veto Awards. I will say, was anyone invited to the Veto Awards? Did we have any guests outside of like our regular cast? I don't know. I will say my mom saw this comment and did... Uh, call me and uh, and and tell me to remind Legal Eagle. So Devin, if you're watching this, uh, my mom wanted to remind you that you have an open invitation to visit them in upstate New York. Uh, they 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 would love to see you. Would love to hang out with you. Would love to play tennis with you. Uh, so there you go. You and my mom are on the same side. Um, everyone's disappointed with me. Uh, so go hang out with my parents and talk about why I'm a disappointment. Moving on. Drama, La Drama Llama BQ says, I want to thank the Vitos for having a best fall category, beating the Oscars to a stunt category like the classiest award show possible. Hey, we did something right for a change. Uh, I love to see that. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, you know, here, here's the thing. I will say, I did think about, I think I, I thought about this last year too, about like adding a best stunt category in the vetoes just because, you know, it's, it's an ongoing conversation about how the Oscars don't have that category and, you know, th that is underrepresented and, and it's the thing that should be represented. Um, the reason I didn't do a best stunt category specifically is because for the past couple of years, uh, Vulture has been doing the stunt awards, their own whole like awards thing dedicated to stunts and action scenes and that kind of like physical, practical, you know, onset action. And I didn't want to step on their toes because they're doing like really cool stuff with that. So, you know, if you haven't checked out the Vulture stunt awards, it, it, it's well worth it. I mean, it, it's like an article that you read, but uh, also a great way to find out about more, you know, action movies from the past year that you might have missed. If anything, I, I think next year in the vetoes, we need to incorporate even more action-related categories. Kareem says, I'm just glad this is an annual thing now and Patrick legally cannot stop making vetoes. Did I sign a legally binding contract that I'm not aware of? Uh, I, I was not aware of that, but it is an annual thing now. And so, look, maybe we'll, we'll do a Patreon goal where it's like, if, if we reach this goal, then I will 
sign paperwork legally binding me to make the vetoes every year. But also, every time we add a Patreon goal on there, uh, people don't seem to be very motivated to sign up, and we don't get there. We still haven't reached Puppet Patrick. We still haven't reached the lacrosse video with my dad. My dad, uh, uh, no joke, uh, like, semi-regularly does say, like, hey, we need closer to hitting that goal for the lacrosse video. And so I'm just like, look, guys, you know, this this is not about supporting the channel. I mean, I do love it when people support the channel. Uh, it makes it easier for me to, like, pay everyone who works on the videos. But, uh, okay, this is partly about supporting the channel. It's mostly about not disappointing my dad. It's his birthday in, like, a couple weeks. Don't you want him to get to talk all about lacrosse on camera? That's all I'm saying. Anyway, uh, yeah, vetoes every year. That, that's how it's gonna go. Penn Davis says, I'd like to gift Patrick H. Willems the Veto Award for Best Knitwear Collection Among Video Essayists on YouTube. This is my favorite comment. This is, I mean, it's also, it's not criticizing me, uh, but thank you. I'm very proud of my knitwear collection, you know? Got some on right now. Have I worn this in a video? Wait, yeah, I, I think I wore this in an ad read once. Anyway, I love knitwear. It's my favorite kind of wear. I I'm proud of my knitwear collection. I'm always trying to expand it, improve it, add new items to it. This summer, well, I might do what I did last summer and um, and pick up some, like, you know, holy grail knitwear items while they were are, like, super on sale. Um, so, yeah, this... this I, I, I love winter. Let me just wear the biggest, chunkiest sweaters all the time. Jay Banzia says, This man didn't put Barbie in his top 20, and then didn't make a joke about it not being in his top 20, and that power money cannot buy. Uh, thanks? I didn't realize- that didn't seem like a, any kind of power move? To me, uh, I'm glad that it, it came off that way. Honestly, now I'm just thinking that I probably should have had a joke about not having Barbie in the top 20. Because, like, the, thinking about how the list was going, you know, I feel like especially as we're getting through the top 10, Oppenheimer's number two, there, there surely someone was like, well, number one must be Barbie then. And then it wasn't. Uh, and so, so yeah, I honestly, we, yeah, we probably missed an opportunity for a joke, but I guess, I, I, I yeah, I, I don't know, I guess, I guess we're so powerful that we don't need to, I don't even know. Anyway, thank you for the comment. Danis Thoughts says, no Hunger Games nomination in the musical numbers in a non-musical. Patrick, I'm shaking and crying. Uh, so here is a, pl a part where I'm embarrassed to admit that I still haven't gotten around to seeing the new Hunger Games movie, which I've heard nothing but good things about. Everyone likes it. I kept meaning to see it, and, uh, and it just, it just pa passed me by. I, I do fully intend to catch up with it, but yeah, that's why it's not nominated, because I didn't see it. And I'm pretty sure the other writers who don't see enough movies, I haven't seen it either. No Laughing Matter says, I just like to let Jake know that I appreciate the way he shifted the beat on the melody of Crash Into Me, took what would otherwise be a dorm room cover and made it actually musically interesting, at least for people familiar with the original. Thank you, Jake. Hey, look at that. I I didn't even really realize that he'd, he'd done much uh, with the beat. It's like I'm familiar with the song Crash Into Me by... Dave. Uh, I, I, I come from a hometown. Uh, at, I mean, Jake also does. We come from a town where Dave Matthews is like a big thing and they like they play in the town every summer. And so all through high, I, it, I went to one of those high schools where people just talk about like, hey man, you going to Dave this summer? Um, I'm not one of these people. I, I have never gone to see Dave. I am totally neutral on Dave Matthews Band. But anyway, uh, I did not realize that uh, Jake had, like, adjusted the song at all, and so that's great to hear. I just... I look, I, I love it when Jake sings. Uh, I think, like, I, I love that we've had two episodes so far this season with Jake singing, and I, I say we should have more. 
Trevin Alger says, damn, huge snub on the Murder on the Dance Floor dance from Saltburn. Wasn't the biggest fan of that movie, but for me, easily the best dance of the year. Uh, yeah, the, here I, I have no regrets. I'm not apologizing for anything. Um, I uh, don't like Saltburn. I, I don't think it's a good movie. But uh, but yeah, look, Murder on the Dance Floor is a good song. That scene is, is like well shot, like Lena Sandgren is a good DP. Uh, I'm I'm glad that the movie brought that song, like like introduced that song to new generations. But yeah, honestly, I I have no I I don't really have a lot of feelings about that final dance scene. It just, you know, it kind of felt like another another part in the movie that was that was mostly there just to like get like talked about online and to like cause a stir. Cause like ooh, he's naked. Ooh, his dick's out. Yeah. Uh, no strong feelings about it. Um, honestly, I would still take, like, every dance scene from Magic Mike's Last Dance over that one. Sorry to—no, no, no. Sorry to no one. I, I do not apologize to Saltburn. Uh, I, I am proud of that snub. It should be snubbed. Sean Tracy Esquire says, Can't believe Bo is Afraid was snubbed for best puke scene this year. I mean, really, not even a nomination? Man, ugh. This is, uh, the, okay, two oversights now for the best puke category, and here's the thing. There's another big one that I really feel bad about forgetting about, and I bet you there's gonna be a comment about it. Look, uh, if anything, I think we're learning that it was a big year for puking. Genuinely, I f can't remember the puke scene in Bo is Afraid. Does it involve, like, the, the, the drinking paint? I don't know. I gotta watch it again. Uh, I really like the movie. It was in my top 25. Um, but it just, I fully forgot. That, I mean, the movie's three hours long. So much happens. So I'm sorry I forgot about the puking. Porco Rosso says, I love that this is an annual thing. I left work early today to watch this ASAP. That rules. I love to hear that. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's great. Pepe Moro says, Great video as always, but will there be an additional comics and TV shows section be posted to Nebula? Last year, I, instead of doing like bonus videos on Nebula, I was doing like extended cuts of the regular videos. And the videos last year had in the extended cut, I talked about my favorite comics of the year, my, my favorite TV shows of the year. No, uh, we're not doing that for this year. Basically, for this past year, um, I, 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 I thought about it, but I am still just so far behind on television from 2023. Uh, still so many big things that I just have not gotten to. And also with comics, just like I was I was reading various like best comics of the year uh, articles. And I was like, man, I have, I've read a lot of comics, but I still have missed so many of these. I just, I didn't really feel qualified to, to like speak with e like with any kind of confidence uh, on you know the best or even my favorite uh, comics and and shows of the years until I I catch up and so uh, so yeah uh, I, I decided to leave that out this year so sorry once again I'm apologizing Ugh. I write erotica great username says, I'm not much of a cinema analysis combination video essayist guy, emphasis more so on the former, but ever since I saw you work your way through a box of wine sporting a crazy beard, you were my dude. <laughs> my cinema dude with the good takes, fantastic videos, lovely parents, and a totally justified hatred of novels. I love to hear this. I, look, the TCM Wine Club video is... A personal favorite of mine. I'm still a member of the TCM Wine Club. That was one of the most fun videos to make that I think we've ever done. Uh, and obviously, it did, it wasn't like a, a giant hit. It like did fine. But anytime someone brings up to me that video uh, as one that either like I don't know got them hooked or just like one of their favorites, I'm I'm so happy to hear it. So uh, so thank you. I write erotica. Good luck with the erotica. Um, Mewchu says, Jarnathan was robbed. Justice for Jarnathan. Jarnathan released the Jarnathan cut. Jarnheads unite. Look, we all love Jarnathan. He's great. He's got a great name. But no, he should not have won Best Fucked Up Bird. First of all, Jarnathan, not really fucked up compared to other birds. Um, but also, he's not in the movie that much. Like, 
that's a th like when I was editing uh, that those clips for the video, I was like, man, I've got to slow down the shots that Jonathan is in because he is on screen for so little screen time. Compared to the gray heron, like, there's no contest. That is a way more fucked up bird. Oh, oh, look, it's Dave Wiskus. Dave the agent himself, who says, can't believe we went all the way to LA for that cutaway gag. That is true. That very quick little gag uh, shot on my phone. Uh, that is shot in Los Angeles. When the, the whole video was like basically done being edited. That was the, the last thing we shot. Yeah, and we, we definitely, we had to go to LA just, just for that. Like there was no other reason we were there. Just, just to shoot that scene. Veronica Main says, respecting the following, resisting the urge to plug better help when therapy was mentioned. I've never had better help as a sponsor and uh, have no intention of having better help as a sponsor. So that one was easy. Reusing the same clip of Emma receiving each award. That was just a, a fun idea we had, which also made editing way easier. It's all just copy pasting. Sticking it to Monkey Bone when he died. Screw the dead, spits on Monkey Bone's grave. Yeah. Fuck that monkey. The announcer continuing to show energy and enthusiasm despite realizing his role is totally redundant 10 minutes in. Uh, I mean, look, uh, Chad, uh, who, who did the voice of, oh, actually, here, here's a fun fact for those who didn't look at the credits. Uh, so Chad Rooley, who did the voice of the announcer, also the voice of Charles. Also, mostly whenever we have a voiceover, it's usually Chad. But yeah, that, that was Chad returning uh, for the first time in a little while. Um, so yeah, and, he, and he's the best. The clearly empty envelopes. Yeah, so about the envelopes, um, I was about, I was on my way to shoot the veto. I was on my way to the, the Nebula offices. I think I was about four subway stops in uh, when I realized, oh, the one thing I forgot were the gold envelopes that we used last year for uh, for the nominee or, or for for the winners? Um, yeah. So instead, I just used a pack of envelopes that were already at the office. I wish we'd use these gold ones. Next year, we'll have the gold envelopes, and maybe they'll actually have, you know, the winners written in there. Maybe it could happen. We're trying to improve every year. See, like this year, we added a tux. Lydia says, but seriously, which of the Wes Anderson doll short films do you think is the best? This one was my personal favorite. Hard to watch, but it hit so hard. The distance of the presentation left so much to the imagination. It was more visceral than it would have been otherwise. I, you know, I think they're all good. It is the obvious one, but I think I'm going to say the wonderful story of Henry Sugar which was all, also just like when I was a kid who was like, was obsessed with, with Roald Dahl books. That was just a story that I'd always really loved. Um, and so, yeah, so I've, I've, you know, so I'm a little bit biased because I've, you know, been a fan for most of my life, but, uh, but yeah, uh, honestly, tough choice. Uh, yeah, it, I really hope that they do like a, like a, a Criterion release for just those short films. That would be great. Reese My Socks Off says, just to add to the chorus, Emma being handed the award in the same way each time is a fantastic bit. I, <laughs> so the, the thing about the, the gag with just using the same clip of Emma every time was when we were like, when I, when I was working with Jake and Mike and we were like planning uh, the video uh, and coming up with ideas for it, that was a thing that came up and, we're, and we laughed and we're like, that's funny, let's do it. And then we shot it, and I think it took like two takes where I was just like, here, Emma, walk over and, and, and take it. So it, it took like 30 seconds to shoot. And then when I was editing it, because so much of it for every single award just became like copy pasting that clip over and over again, and it was so routine that I kind of forgot it was ever a joke because it, <laughs> it's, it's just became like busy work that I didn't even have to think about, just putting the same clip in every time. And then it was really nice to see so many people like mentioning that gag because uh, I had forgotten it was <laughs> it was ever meant to be funny. So I was like, oh yeah, oh right. Th at, at one point, at one point, we did laugh at this, and uh, and I guess it worked. So great to see that mentioned. Sean P. Foster says, "Wow, no love for everything, everywhere, all at once for a second year in a row. The fix is in." <laughs> Uh, for anyone who looked at the comments section to the vetoes a year ago are the Patrick replies 
uh, video for the vetoes last year. Um, this is a very funny comment. Noah Mulder says, as someone who has both fallen and puked on several occasions, I felt seen by these awards. Thanks, Noah. We here at the vetoes, you know, are really making an effort to, uh, to make sure that fallers and pukers feel seen. We see you. J.H. Clementine says, love the 80 for Brady shout out. It was fun. It was fun. Fun movie. I had a good time. The Typer says, okay, I need to know if you looped the footage of Emma. Uh, as I've already mentioned, yes, can confirm we did. I also just want to call out and appreciate, one, how many times you had to do a new take walking into frame again and again for each award. Thank you. I, I did certainly walk to that same little marker on the floor many, many times, which is why if you watch the video, you can usually see me look down so that I land on my marker. And two, the energy Patrick brought when delivering the intro of the most fucked up bird. Hilarious. Thank you. I, I like genuinely thank you. So with, with this video, um, here's a little bit of insight into how we shoot these. I don't know if anyone cares about this, but I'll give it anyway. So when I shoot a regular essay, uh, I do two takes of the whole thing. I mean, I, like I, I've split the essay usually into, into chapters and I do, and I shoot like each chapter like on its own, uh, and I do two takes of each one. In the edit, we only use the second take. The first take is basically practice, uh, but it's but it's always two takes of everything. But with the vetoes, we had so little time to shoot it. Uh, it was our only day to shoot. I was traveling the next day, so we had to get it all done, and we had to wrap by a certain time. And I realized after we 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 shot like uh, the opening, I, I was like, oh god, I don't have time for two takes. We just got to do, like, one take of this whole thing. The one exception is that for the presentation of the Best Fucked Up Bird Award, um, I did three takes of that because I was like, I want to get this right. And I think I got it right. And so thank you because, I, like, according to this comment, I, th I think we nailed it. So this is great to hear. Levi Tompkins says... Uh, Yep, here's the comment that I knew I knew was coming inevitably. How did Mutant Mayhem not even get a nomination for Best Puke Disappointing? Yeah, so for those who have not seen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, uh, a really, really fun movie. It, it honestly does have probably the best puking scene of the year. I, I mean, like, maybe unquestionably. It's such a good puking scene. I think because it had been like seven months or so since I had seen the movie, I just fully forgot about it. I blanked. Our, our writers had... God, please. I actually... I was about to say, please yell at our writers, uh, well, Jake and Mike, uh, to watch more movies, but also like they're... they're like barely active on social media, uh, so I don't know if they'll even see it. But yeah, like like they like like they, that was all on me because they hadn't seen it, and I just fully forgot. I fully forgot, and I'm ashamed. I'm really ashamed because, like, it's it's a spectacular puking scene. I will say I do think just like objectively, it's funnier to give best puke to the zone of interest. Uh, so the win, I, I, yeah. But like. F you know, even in the nominations, yeah, this is, I sincerely apologize. This is really embarrassing. This is really shameful of me. I'm going to take some time to think about what I've done because I don't want to ever let anything like this happen again. I am sorry. Not the right tone. I'm sorry. No. I, I am sorry. So weird. I'm sorry! I don't know why you're shouting at me. To all of you watching, I'm sorry. Gonzalo Piscicelli. Piscicelli says, no, the first slam dunk? Man, this award show is rigged. I haven't seen the first slam dunk. The, 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 the anime movie about basketball. Yeah, I just, I just haven't seen it. Uh, I, I've, I've heard pretty good things about it. I, I, I did not get to it. So, so yeah, I, I didn't so much snub it as just uh, it wasn't even in consideration because I had not seen the movie. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Once again, I'm sorry. Lithorgos says, poor things, myriad sex scenes were snubbed. 
I didn't didn't they get did they get a nomination for most plot relevant sex scene? I look look I've I've forgotten so much that has happened already. But yeah, look you know poor things. Great movie. Uh, I loved it. Uh, yep, lots of sex scenes in there. I stand by passages as the winner. Christopher Bagwell says you did not like Napoleon. Nobody liked Napoleon. Ridley Scott didn't like Napoleon. I liked Napoleon. Yeah, I had a really good time with it. Um, I think the like four hour cut is gonna be, I, I, I predict it'll be really good. Um, I think Napoleon is a surprisingly like really good comedy. It's I think it's so funny. I know many people who like Napoleon. Uh, so I'm, I'm sorry, deal with it. But uh, yeah, Napoleon's good. Remember the part uh, where he says, you think you're so great because you have boats and then storms away? It, it's so funny. <laughs> I want to watch Napoleon again. Christopher, I'm not apologizing to you. You should apologize for accusing me of lying. The problem with usernames is I never know when one word ends and another begins. Is this like Dimitri Alexiou? I don't know. I'm, uh, tell me, how, please tell me which is your first name, and which is your last name. He says, "Isn't Ferrari a capitalism biopic?" No, no, it's it's not a capitalism biopic uh, because Ferrari is not about the founding of the company. It's not about like the building of one specific car. It is about uh, a sad man who uh, treats the people in his life uh, who die. I. Uh, like they are parts in a car to be replaced. Um, yeah, he owns a company, but uh, but it's not like it's. But the movie's about him. It's not about the company. So so there you go. Chap Pablo, Chap yeah yeah Chap Pablo says I watch all your ad reads, Patrick, because I want Emma to get paid. Yes, we love to hear this. We all want Emma to get paid. When, when you watch the ad reads, you know, yes, you should sign up for Mubi and especially Nebula. Uh, and, and you should, because, and we love it when people do that and it does benefit me, but more importantly, it benefits Emma. And we all love Emma. Emma's way more likable than me. Oh, oh, that, that's the end of the YouTube comments. Oh my God, look, look at this. We are making such good time. So now time to go over to the only question uh, from the Ask Patrick channel on our Discord server. I have to say this every time. Uh, the Discord server is uh, exclusively available to members of the Patreon. Another good reason to join the Patreon, other than, you know, to help make my dad happy by getting us to the, the goal for the lacrosse video. Anyway, on Discord, we have a channel called Ask Patrick where people can, you know, just, you can ask me whatever. Uh, if the questions are about the latest video, then they'll go into the Patrick Replies videos. If they're just about whatever, like about, like, Patrick, what do you have for breakfast in the morning? Um, how about, Patrick, how do you take your coffee? Um, then I'll just answer them, like, in text on Discord. Anyway, I'll answer them all. You, you can... If you want to ask me stuff, that's where to do it. Jen Jordan says, Watching the vetoes and really getting caught up on the image of Nobles solemnly watching Zone of Interest. I'm very curious as to his extended thoughts. I mean, I also love this image. Uh, we'd, we had some conversations about what Nobles' top five movies would be. And, uh, and we were like, Zone of Interest has to be in there. Uh, that's the thing. Nobles, uh, Nobles has 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 great taste. He's got, you know, he loves populist mainstream things, but he also, you know, is an educated guy who loves highbrow cinema. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I th I think Nobles saw a Zone of Interest at the Angelica, um, which is where I saw it, and um, you know, in one of the theaters where you can hear the train running overhead. Um, but look, uh, Nobles is not here right now, so I cannot get his extended thoughts. But hopefully, you know, in, in a future episode, we can we can hear him talk more about it, because I think that will be funny. And I want to I want to see it. Anyway, that's all for now. I uh, th there's all I didn't get around to checking the P.O. box, so I, I don't even have any physical mail to open. This is like the shortest one ever. This is so great. I'm, I'm thrilled. C cool. Um, I'm I'm gonna Look, I, I also, I'm shooting this at like 11 a.m. Uh, and so I'm not drinking alcohol because I'm, you know, I'm responsible. I'm drinking water. Mm. 
And now that I got this out of the way, I'm gonna go to the gym. A thing that I haven't done in a week because, because I was busy working on, on a video. Anyway, time to, to try to take care of myself again. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching the channel in general. Um, yeah, uh, hey, we, we now got to do the Patrick Replies video for the Mario Adaptations episode. And then we'll be all caught up. Great. Can't wait. All right. Bye, everyone.